Chapter 17 gives us a statistics test that we can use when our data is not normal. By normal, we are referring to whether or not the assumptions of the normal curve can be expected. Here in slide 2, we see that chapter 17 introduces us to the concept of the chi-square, what it is, when and how to use it, and the process of using Excel to determine our chi statistic. We will also be talking about a few other non-parametric statistics that unfortunately the text does not go into. A few chapters back we learned about the normal curve and how if we had a good random selection with a large enough population we could get a predictable bell-shaped curve when we plotted it on a graph. However, for practicing social workers, we often do not have large enough samples to satisfy parametric assumptions, i.e., our sample does not necessarily represent the population, either because it is too small or because of the nature of our work we end up working with populations that are not clustered around the middle of the bell curve. So that is where non-parametric statistics come into play. So our data does not necessarily need to be normally distributed. It does not even need to be in numbers. The one-way chi test relies on category data and counting. The one sample chi-square is often called a goodness of fit test and what it tells us is whether or not the frequencies we are observing in the distribution could be expected to happen by chance or not. We can also do chi-square tests on data that has two dimensions, i.e. two categorical variables. Here in slide 6 we can see what really is a fairly simple equation. The chi-square value is equal to the sum of the observed frequencies minus the expected frequencies squared and then all that divided by the expected frequency. So we see here in our data that we have three options for the respondents preference for school vouchers. In this case, 23 people are for it, 17 selected maybe, and 50 selected against. That is three categories that happen to total up to 90. So in this case, 23, 17, and 50 are our observed frequencies. So we have our observed frequencies where do we get our expected frequencies? Well, if our frequencies were equally distributed, then our expected frequencies can easily be calculated by taking the total number of data points, i.e. 23 plus 17 plus 50, which equals 90, and dividing that by the number of categories, which in this case is 3. So we have 90 divided by 3 equals 30. 30 is our expected frequency. Nothing could be simpler. If there were four categories, it would be 90 divided by 4. If there were two, it would be 90 divided by 2. Just like every other statistic we calculate, we have to know the degrees of freedom. This is important so that when we check our chi-square score against our table in the back of our statistics book, we will know where to look. For the single sample chi-square, we take the number of categories we have and subtract 1. So in our case, where we have 4, maybe and against, that is three categories. Minus one are the degrees of freedom 
would then be 2. Here in slide 9 we see the beginnings of what should be a very familiar 8-step process by now. We set our null hypothesis, which in this case states that all categories will have equal counts. Then our research hypothesis, which states that the observed frequencies in each of the categories will be different. We set our level of risk, i.e. the significance level, or how much risk we are willing to take of committing a type 1 error, and then we select the appropriate statistic. Continuing with the chi-square plan, <clears throat> we computed our test statistic called the obtained value, then we find table B5 in our textbook and determine the value needed for rejection of the null hypothesis, just like we did with the F test, the T test, etc. We compare the two, the obtained and the critical. And again, if the obtained value is more extreme than the critical value, the null hypothesis cannot be accepted, i.e. the differences that we are observing probably did not happen by chance. And if the obtained value does not exceed the critical value, then the null hypothesis is our most attractive explanation, i.e. we have no evidence that the findings that we are observing did anything but happen by chance. Now Excel does not have a fancy data analysis tool pack feature to calculate our non-parametric statistics for us. What is it worth? But as we can see, the calculations are not that onerous. And in a minute I will pull up a spreadsheet and we can calculate that very same data. By now writing out statistics tests in APA format should be familiar to you. It is always the name of the test equals then the obtained statistic and then the P of less than 0.05. Now Excel does have a chi-square test function but that does not give us our chi statistic but rather it gives us our probability. All we have to do is set up our observed frequency in one column or row and then set up our expected frequencies or in columns or rows. Then we open up our chi-square test function dialog box, enter the range of our observed data which is called the actual range and then our expected frequencies in the expected range array box, such as what we see here in slide 16. And we can see we get a very small probability number, meaning it is unlikely that this happened by chance. Slides 18, 19, and 20 expose us to the basic non-parametric tests. In order to do most of these tests you would probably need a dedicated statistics package or the willingness to do some very careful programming in Excel. Finally, the chi-square test is just one of many of the non-parametric statistics and while they are valuable tools you will need to be comfortable with the R program or SPSS if you want to take advantage of their usefulness to social work practitioners and administrators.